It makes me really wonder this question of when you're in that hay field and the movement goes from you asking God what he wants and God mirroring it back to you as you write in the book to like that mirror image. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, do you think he wanted you to just believe in who he made you to be? Because he didn't make you to hide. He didn't make you to be invisible. He didn't make you to shrink. No. He didn't do that. I mean, no. I'm I'm just curious because that, that question, what do you want, unnerves me, unhinges me. I don't, I mean, I'm, I could just uh, help. <laughs> How? I mean, we you've already told us, you know, this three realities of life or we have this cocktail of codependency. The armor of invisibility is underneath that cocktail of codependency. There's confusing church messages. Mm -hmm. I'm there still. And cultural conditioning, mm -hmm. you know, what, how, what, how do we answer that question mm -hmm. without, I wrote down, I, how do I actually do that? Mm -hmm. I'm trying so hard and maybe I don't need mm -hmm. to try so hard. Maybe I just need to go find a hayfield mm -hmm. and meander about it or, 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 or like, do you think that's what he just wants us to finally just believe in who he created us to be i think so the best metaphor i have to answer your question because again it is a i'm aware it's a million dollar question it is a million dollar question the best metaphor i have for it and i and this is in chapter 10 when i talk about spiritual codependency yeah. is just learning to use our wings a little bit it's mm. not it's not a what do you want once and for all yeah it's a what do you want yeah. And what do you want to do? In that moment, at that period of time, it was I'd started writing this book and it was, I want to write this book. That was the next step. Now I think to myself, but but the question, what do you want? You think about the mama bird with the little birds in the nest. We want to cling to the nest. And sometimes she's nudging them out and they gotta just just fly a little bit. And and what is that <laughs> next tree? What what is the next tree? Bit. That's so good. You That's know? a title maybe it, yeah, just fly a little bit maybe it doesn't have to be what do you want you 10 know, years from now what's just nice. what's just the next tree what's the next tree mm, the yeah, next but... tree might be you know when our kids went off to college my husband would say they, they made it when we kind of saw that they were re, they were doing pretty well they made it to the next tree <gasps> oh, oh i oh, love so that. exciting right because then there's going to be another tree the next yes. tree is Will they be able to navigate a successful relationship? Well, you know, mm -hmm. so what's the next tree? So, That's so for you, good. when you're, if you're wrestling with that question mm -hmm. too much, it's like, what do I just want? Maybe this month or, mm -hmm. or maybe this week, would it, would it be, mm -hmm. I just love, you know, to, to have a, a closer, healthy, I just love to have one really deep conversation with my husband or yes. I just love to have fun with mm -hmm. a friend or, I love to feel what it's like to, you know, be with God in a different way. You know, what's, mm -hmm. what do you want? doesn't mm -hmm. have to be this lofty thing, but as you move toward that next thing you want, you're going to mm -hmm. discover you are more and yeah. more and more of who you are. Mm -hmm. And and, the, and you're going to discover a couple things. You're going to like, I thought I wanted that. And then you're like, I actually don't. <laughs> exactly. Do. Yes. It doesn't have to be a, you know, I launched my, my podcast in May. Yes, you, know, you I gotta did. Tell you, that was one of those things where I was like, I don't, I think I want this. I don't know. And I'm just now, I, but I gave myself permission. Yeah. I said, my husband said, give it a year. I said, I'll give it three months. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm less patient than he is, but. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm four or five months in and I'm like, I like it. I like it. I think you should I want like this. it. It's good. But, but I gave myself permission mm. to go. If I don't, yeah, if that's I don't so good. In a year, I don't have to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. so, yep. so it's trial and error. I don't think it's, I think we put so much pressure on ourselves, but, but it is so important, especially with the trauma background, especially if we weren't taught as children to honor mm -hmm. that next step of what we want. 
Mm-hmm. Who do I want to spend time with this week? Who oh. don't I want to spend time with this week? Oh, we, we got to go there for just a minute. <laughs> yeah. Find where it is in my five pages of notes. You actually say, you give us permission. Of course, I can't find it at the moment. You give permission to I, three questions. Where are they? Do I actually want to spend time with this person? <laughs> is this coming? Is this coming into, into mind? Heavens yeah, to Betsy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I actually want to spend time with this person? Do I actually want to spend my energy this way? I Okay, Allison, yeah. it all begs, it all comes back down though to that foundation of knowing who you are, mm-hmm. knowing that true self, that essence, I call it the God-breathed self, mm-hmm. knowing and being comfortable in your own skin um, speaking from a person who was disembodied most of her life myself. So I yeah. danced so I could feel my skin and feel my mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. When you don't like, I would still be saying to myself, well, you need to spend time. That's the right thing to do. That's the good Christian girl thing to do. So there comes that Christian culturally, <laughs> Christian and cultural conditioning, right? That you're, you're a mean person if you don't do yeah. that. So I really want in this conversation to try to get at least a nut and bolt around that, a practical mm-hmm. step as to what is the first step. Because I think in this book, The Best of You, you're digging down into mm-hmm. that and helping mm-hmm. us. Um, mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that? That was a big, long question. Yeah, convoluted. I think. Well, this is why there was quite a needle to thread in this book and there's going to need yes. to be a lot of follow-up like workbooks and I've got a lot more coming because okay. the needle that I had to thread was there's a lot in our culture about be true to yourself and that means and don't care about anybody else. And that is not what I'm that's saying. That's not. In this I'm glad book. you clarified. Yep. And so I had to thread that needle of, mm-hmm. and that's why we put true self in God in the, in the yep. title, like. It's also not, but 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 the Christian culture, our Christian culture can push too far toward selflessness. Well, mm-hmm. you should never think about yourself. Correct. Ne- yeah. Neither extreme is helpful. Yeah, they're both and extremes. So would, right. They're both extremes, and so that's where I, I kind of drilled down on this word selfhood. Oh, I'm so True glad. Self. Woo. Define it. Which, can which you do is, it by heart? <laughs> not which, I have well, it. well, it's really. Yeah, it's really this, just this. I would, I would just say the the tactical question that you're asking, which is you know, I don't want to spend time with this person. I feel like I should. Yes. Right. Should So then you, mm-hmm. so curi- curiosity there, you know, um, why do I feel like I should? Mm. Well, because she's my dying mother, <laughs> you know? Oh, oh yes. Okay, well, then maybe I'm back at home. <laughs> maybe. Sorry. You know, yeah. But, you know, I mean, just, you know, okay. I, I probably ought there, there is some mm-hmm. healthy shoulds, but how much time? What is the quality of that time? What is the quantity of that time? I have some control. How much bandwidth do I have? How much energy do I have? What other people, such as children, spouses, friends, need of me? I am no use to the world if I am exhausted. So it just becomes a more robust question than should or no. It's, man, yeah. something in my body, and I go through the different ways, listening you to learn to listen to the mm-hmm. voice of your life. Something yep. in my body, and one way I had to learn I would start to have anxiety attacks. Mm-hmm. I was like, if I, I literally, I, I, I mean, I feel terrible, but I would be sitting over coffee with someone when I was at the height, this was in my thirties, this was years ago mm-hmm. when I was at the height of my, I only lived for other people and self is bad. Yes. I would be at coffee with someone and start to have an anxiety attack and have to leave. Oh, I understand and oh, I, too well. Wow. It, because That's I was not listening to the cues of my body. Right. Everything I did was how do I serve you? Mm-hmm. And and my body was like, you got nothing. You got nothing to give this person. Mm-hmm. They're not doing it. And they're not doing anything wrong. You're showing up for something you don't have energy for. Yes. Man, yes. was that mm-hmm. like, so listening to the cues of your body with the shooting is, yeah, this is somebody I want to, I mean, first of all, I want to say, <laughs> I want to say 90%, but I'm going to say, to be generous, 75% of the time, the shooting is really, does this person really yes. need me? Let's, you know, 25% of the time, maybe. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, 
I still get some say in how, when, on what terms. That's it. Um, that's it right, right there. Uh, I that's don't it have though. To... Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no. I get excited about this stuff too. We're, we're you and I, I are know. like two. I know. Two peas in a pod here. I think that's what it is. It's that, and you write so brilliantly about it. Finding your voice. I've written about it. Finding your voice. And in this community, we equate voice with value, worth, and dignity. So they're inextricable. When yeah. I know, when I know that I know how much I can handle my boundaries and you write about boundaries, this mm -hmm. book is such a journey as well. And so if you don't know yourself, mm -hmm. then you can't think for yourself. You, you, you've shared that so brilliantly in the cocktail of codependency that you know, you don't know where you end and the other person begins. You just have no sense of personal agency, no autonomy. No. And there's reasons you're that way more than likely. That's right. Yeah. But for the sake of this podcast and this time, you know, I guess I'm just, I, I so, I feel like it's so urgent mm. that particularly mm. women of faith. Mm -hmm understand they have agency they have a voice they have not yes. been called to be invisible you say it clearly you're not called to be a doormat we yeah. are called you say it so yeah. perfectly you know yeah not a doormat but but i don't think i was talking to someone the other day and they were like you know i don't think we have models for that yet not he yeah. was like, so who do you admire? And who? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying here, you know, but mm -hmm. who, who are, are doing it well and who are really, yes. truly it, authentically. Yes. Yes. Following the way of Jesus. That's right. You know, right? In a nuanced way without throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know. No, I think it's, I do think it's, I don't hear a Christian woman not struggling with this. And, and ironically, men kind of take it for granted. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't think about as much, not all men. No, no. And especially men of color, men who've been marginalized. You know, I, I've spoken with many of them are like, yeah, some of that resonated with me because we're supposed to sm play small to get along, right? But yeah. um, I, I think mm. this whole thing of selfhood, what I say about selfhood is- oh, So good. It, any relationship, including your relationship with God requires two people and you are one of those people. Yes. You have to bring yourself into any relationship that you want to be healthy, including your relationship with God. Yes. Preach it. And I mean, speak it, teach it. I love that. We do not know. We do not do anyone any favors by sidelining, rejecting, bypassing our own selves. Mm. We are not showing up as truthful we are not showing up as authentic. We are not showing up. And that that relationship cannot thrive if we do not bring our true selves to the table. Now, again, true self is not my mm -hmm. way or the highway. That's, That's not correct. what it is. True right. self is simply saying, I have a preference. I have a voice and my voice matters. I'm also happy to listen to your voice. And guess what? The more confident I am in saying, here's what I think, here's what I feel, yeah. the more free I am to tell me about what you think and feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that interesting? You think about marriage. I did a, a interview last week with a, a, a guy. He was great. He was like, well, what does this mean for marriage? And I was like, guys should be thrilled. <laughs> I was like, because listen, what does if, this mean for I, marriage? Wow. If, I mean, if I'm coming to the table going, well, this is what I think and what I want. And he's coming to the table going, this is what I think and what I want. And you both have done your own work. You're mm -hmm. both like, there's nothing in that that is offense it, it, okay no. so we don't agree i want to do this i want to do this i mean i think this way i think this way interesting yes now you get to the fun part and this mm -hmm. is the dialectical thinking this is mm -hmm. the chapter nine now we get to negotiate oh that's and it's guess so good what, yes guess what the best material comes from when you just the fun and the play of creativity of going mm -hmm. okay how are we gonna this is because my it's better it's yes. better you know, you, you were right at so much better decisions, conclusions, you know, 
-hmm. When two people go, okay, wow, it can't just be my way. It can't just be your way. We're going to have to negotiate a way forward. And all of a sudden, everybody's creativity kicks in. And that's mm -hmm. half the fun. It is. You know? It ends up being, um, and hopefully you can bring laughter into the situation. And, hopefully, and, you know, if the wall's not too high and there isn't, you know, it hasn't been. And good. that's the yep. goal. But yep. if, if one person is coming in, it's my way or the highway. And one mm -hmm. person is coming in, I'll just be a doormat. It, it's just, it's a toxic recipe. And it is toxic. Yeah. Yep, definitely. It, it, and so we're not, I'm not pushing for this, you know, I'm really pushing hear me. for this. Hear me roar, right? It's not like I am woman, yeah. hear me roar. No, but it's it I is. am woman, I have value, worth, and dignity. And As therefore my voice you, matters. Mm -hmm. And yes. my voice matters. And guess what? If you can't respect my voice, I won't be able to be in a healthy relationship with you. Right. And that is that is again another message for women if you can't respect not that you have to do everything my way not, but if you mm -hmm. can't respect my voice or my limits or my nose you know i've started mm. i write about this also i started in the in my 30s when i was having to change i would have to test friendships and yeah, i would that i just found it actually <laughs> I, I, I would test, test a new relationship yes that's what i was looking for i thought and, this is and, brilliant because i know myself well enough but I'm like, I'll turn myself inside out. And if I can't introduce a no early on or a preference early on and they can't tolerate it, I can't do it. And so that's very right. early on, just that's be like, right. man, that's not going to work for me. Or yeah. I'm sorry, I can't, you know, and, and you find out really fast. You can. I love that you respond. brought that in. You brought in seven signs of a healthy friendship, it's page 147. Please, when you get this book, healthy friendships don't define who you are. This is so good. They remind you of who you are. That's right. And you hear this massive thunderstorm going on in the back. Okay. I love it. Healthy friendships don't define who you are. They remind you of who you are. And you give these seven signs for a healthy mm -hmm. friendship. I think you could put a healthy relationship yes. uh, in that yes. as well. Respect, yes. of course. Honesty, yes. right? True honesty with... Yes. Um, healthy assertiveness there where you're mutually allowing a dialogue to happen, not just the my way or the highway reliability, right. right? Mutuality. I love your description of that common interest, freedom. And then the final one, emotional safety. Yeah. Right. I know for me yeah. in my seventh decade here, that is the absolute, it will be. Yeah that's, it's gotta be there. I have to feel emotionally safe with someone else. Yeah. It's, it's a deal yeah. breaker if I don't. And, yeah. um, I think that I love the fact that you put that in there. I also just wanted to quickly, um, address, cause I get this a lot and I bet that you do too. And I'm so happy that you're addressing it. Can I get someone to change? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many times do our clients come sit down and go fix him, fix her, fix my adolescent, fix this, right? Uh, and you give brilliant uh, help here. You encourage filling out this sentence. I feel blank when blank. Mm -hmm. And I love that you brought this out because I've actually used this quite a bit already mm -hmm. uh, just from pre-reading your book. You know, I feel intimidated. I feel mm. small. Mm. I feel belittled when you use that tone of voice. Is that what you're talking about here? Something like that? Yeah. It, it, for, it, it's, for, it's a discipline. I, yeah. I, I respect and admire that you're already implementing because it's, I am. It's, it's so good. We talk about this as therapy 101 and, and this, I feel principle is, yeah. you know, it's a tested principle, but it's hard to do because what we want to do is be, you're being a jerk. You're criticizing me. You're being insensitive, right? Without a <laughs> or doubt. You're being needy, whatever it is. That's, that's how it comes to us. It does. And that is not going to work usually in most relationships. <laughs> Rarely I mean, does it work. <laughs> sometimes, you know, when you're in a playful mood, you know, it works, but, yes. but when you're really heated. And then you got to do the work to go, what is it that I need? What is happening inside of me? And mm -hmm. again, going back to yourself. Yes. Because when we're conditioned toward only looking to help other people, we're also conditioned for other people to read our minds, 
for other people to figure, you know, it, it's looking towards yourself and going, what do I actually need in this situation? Why yeah. is this bothering me? And what do mm -hmm. I actually need? Yeah. It, it brings you back to that internal locus of control, that agency. Oh, there it is. There's something right? else. There's more to talk about. You talk so and, well about that, Allison. I'm repeating myself, not, heart lifters. I, Sorry. No, no, you're fine. And you might, I say very clearly, it's not, I'm not promising you you'll get it mm -hmm. just because you say, here's what I need. You know, it's not that, but, but what you do get when you know that, let's say they can't, they're like, I don't care. There's women to do anyway. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. now I know. Now I know I have choice. How, what, how, do, how am I going to get that need met another way? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just, again, about the agency to, to, it, it, it's it like, really is. I, I do have power here. I can't get them to change. I can, but I can own what I actually want and need. Mm -hmm. I can determine the limits of this relationship. Yes. Even in marriage, you know, even in even marriage, in our spouse isn't going to meet all our needs. It's like, okay, they can't do that thing. So mm -hmm. what's a healthy way? Because it is something I, I crave. Yeah. So how can, and, and I think about that all the time in marriage. I'm like, there's so many marriages. It's like, that's not a deal breaker. Some things are. Yes. A lot Some things are. Correct. Yep. But so. it is about finding your personal agency, which leads us to knowing who we really are, who Christ right. breathed in us, you know, God breathed in us to be, yeah. and then understand and understand that have that value, worth, and dignity. Your closing words, I really don't want to close, <laughs> but I respect you, uh, your time as you envision the best of you. Mm. Here's the irony. And this is what really, um, caused me to take great pause. And I will be spending some time meditating on this for sure. She's already inside you mm -hmm. waiting for you to release her into the world. The best of you has been inside you all along. You may have lost sight of her, but she's been with you. I wonder, mm -hmm. did you write that to yourself first? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah, that's, I know. yeah. I was like, yeah. there she is. She's speaking yeah. to little sixth grade Allison, yeah. you know, that's the irony, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's just waiting for us to release her into the world. What does that look like? How do we do that? Well, we do it by being here, being present, listening, growing. Right. I'm That's so right. proud of my heart That's lifters. Right. It's such a community that is committed to personal and spiritual mm -hmm. growth, mental health. And mm -hmm. we just thank you so much for coming again, Allison, and speaking from your heart and sharing your wisdom. I'm so thankful that um, you're here. Mm. And oh, that- thank you. <laughs> And that you embraced that life-threatening valley uh, with courage, mm -hmm. even when it didn't feel like courage. I'm grateful you spent time in that hayfield. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm Thank grateful you, that you're not hiding anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't hide. We need you. Take care of yourself, of course. Yeah, <laughs> right. But you are our queen of hearts and we need you. We need you. We need your voice and we need your wisdom and we just need your presence. So many, many, many blessings on your life and your work. Thank you. You embody what it means to be a heart lifter. I appreciate so much these conversations with you. It's your, the, the feelings are mutual and I'm so grateful mm. for the good work you are putting into your community, into your work. Um, it's so sincere and mm -hmm. you, you've lifted my heart today. I hope and, so. So thank you. You're welcome. Next time. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>